In this video, I want to cover something I like to call petting with a purpose. I consider petting a dog our way of paying the dog. Um, right now, what I've watched is the dog comes over to the guardian, the guard like this, and the guardian pets the dog. Well, we're paying them for doing what they want to do. If you have a job where your boss says, from now on, there are no consequences, and you can do anything you want, you're probably gonna be a pretty crappy employee at that job. We get paid to do some of the things that we don't like, and that's motivation for us. So, uh, I like to use a hand motion like this. Now, if you look at my hand, it's completely empty. But from Jake's perspective, it looks like I'm holding something. For so if I want a dog to uh, sit, I just go in an arc over his head, sit. So I'm just rewarding him for the desired action. Now, if Jake nudges me or scratches me and tells me what to do and I do it, then after a while, Jake's like, yeah, I'm the boss of this guy because I tell him what to do and he does it. Well, so next time Jake does that, he's giving you an order. Instead of complying with his order, give him a counter order. Tell him to sit. Again, I like to use that hand motion, put him in a sit. As soon as he sits, I pat under the chin. Like I talked about in the other video, when a dog's nose in the air, they feel good. So pat him under his chin and say the word sit. Not good boy, not good dog, here. Um, what, not any of those other words, just the command word by itself. And also the inflection matters. If I say sit and then he sits, I go sit. That's a completely different sound to dogs because they hear enunciation. Stormy, you're living yeah. dangerously. I know. And that's just a good correction. Yep. Um, Stormy <laughs> is a little bit long in the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, I was but she's probing, and the other dog yep. is appropriate, saying, hey, no, this yep. is my area, and this is my item. And Stormy Back learned off. her lesson. She walked away. Yep. All right, so when the dog gives us an order, nothing's going to happen. But if we give the dog an order, we we're going to give it a counter order. So he scratches you or nudges you, you tell him to sit. Once he sits, pet him on his chin and say the word sit, just the word sit. So after a while, he's like, man, if I tell the human what to do, nothing happens. But if they tell me what to do and I do it, they hook me up, they pay me, or give me a treat. Now, um, after what we're doing is basically saying, changing the perspective from the dog from telling the human what to do to asking the human. Not only are we asking, but we're actually also coming up with a currency. We're asking the dog to pay us for our attention. And the currency we're using is obedience. So after a while, what will happen is the dog's gonna come and sit in front of you and say, look, I'm prepaying for some attention. Can you scratch me behind this ear? We wanna do that as much as we can. We don't have to. But if you don't do it enough, the dog will try other things and the thing that worked in the past, nudging or scratching, might, they might go back to. Um, petting with a purpose is one of the easiest things you can do that will have the biggest impact on, your, on, on the dog's behavior. But we don't realize how often we're petting without a purpose or for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I usually recommend is a watchword of paycheck. So if you're in the room and you come in and you see a significant other is petting the dog and standing up, you say paycheck, and they go immediately throw their arms up, they tell the dog sit, there we go, that worked. Sit, as soon as the dog sits and you pet and say sit, and you can say, actually, babe, I asked him to sit before he came in. When you walked in the, in the door, they stood up and I continued to pet, which David says is a lot. It is. Um, they just have to do something to prepay or change their state on command to get that attention. Now, let's say the, the guardian just wants to pet the dog for no reason, because I feel like it. I'm still going to ask the dog to sit. It still reinforces the behavior we want. And we talked a little bit off camera about neural pathways aligning. The more we ask our dog to sit, the easier it is for them to do it. Dogs do not generalize very well. They need to do something 40 to 80 times in different variations before they can start to uh, generalize. So a lot of us, we take the dog to sit right here. It's right here, they can sit like a ninja. We move over there, they can't sit at all. So petting with a purpose is great because you're doing this all the time throughout the day, over and over for a whole bunch of different locations, and it helps the dog do that. And also, like I talked about in the other video, sitting is a more subordinate position. So the dog says, I have to put myself in a more respectful position to ask for attention, and it helps the dog see us as more of an authority figure. Uh, and after a while, you won't even have to ask. They'll just come and sit, like I said, automatically. Petting with a purpose, like I said, is the easiest thing you can do if you get in the habit of doing it. It will take a week to two weeks for you to get in the habit of it. But if you do, every time you pet your dog with a purpose for the rest of its life, it's a micro dog obedience training session you do, and you won't spend any time or effort thinking about it. You'll just do it automatically. That's what I like to call petting with a purpose.